I'll show you how to install the 4-in-1 module for your Tyrannus so that you can use it as a universal transmitter to control various aircraft from uh, using other protocols like uh, from JGRC, uh, Hubson, SEMA, etc. If, if you see my other video about the Devo 10, which is right here on the left, the white one here, um, I showed you how to add a couple of modules to it to give it the ability to control pretty much every you know, bind and fly aircraft that's out on the market. But thanks to the work done by the people of, um, who did the Devo series, you know, who did the firmware and whatnot, they're able to basically uh, bring that functionality over to other radios. For example, if you have a Tyrannus or a, or a FlySky 9X or a, a 9XR Pro, or anything that runs um, basically OpenTX, you have the ability now to, to use multi-protocols in, in the radio. The Tyrannus is a very popular radio and it has a lot of features built into it and it's also one of my favorites. With the 4-in-1 module, you can now uh, have it talk many other protocols and more at it every day. It's pretty much plug and play depending on how you want to select the protocols. If you don't want to do any soldering, you just plug it in and you just basically turn a dial on the back to select your protocol and that's all you need to get it running. If you want to make it more seamless by selecting the modules in, inside the OpenTX user interface, you'd have to do a little bit of soldering, not too difficult, basically soldering two, two pads and, and then you're able to uh, basically put it into serial mode and then, allow you, and then it allows you to select the protocols that you want to use inside the, uh, the menu itself. I just got the uh, multi-protocol module for my Tyrannus and I'm going to be installing it today. Uh, really excited about it because um, I've been waiting for this for like a couple of months now. I think they're like back ordered or something because I ordered it like in August I think and it's it just arrived so. So you can buy the 4-in-1 module from Banggood for about $50 um, and then you can install it. I also 3D printed a case for it but you can just saw, install it into the empty bay in the back of the Tyrannus without a case at all. You, you know, if you don't ever plan to remove it, you can just stick it in there, put the module inside, put the original cover that's on there, and then, um, then drill a hole and then attach the antenna to it. I decided to do the 3D printer route because um, I have one. But anyways, that's what it looks like. To install the 4-in-1 module, you're, you're going to need a few things. First of all, you need a Tyrannus. Uh, like I mentioned before, the 4-in-1 module works with uh, a number of other radios like the, the Turnigy uh, 9X, the 9XR Pro. There's, there's quite a few of them out there. As long as they run OpenTX, there is a uh, module that's uh, made for it. The 4-in-1 is made for uh, FR Sky, Fly Sky, etc. So the next thing you're going to do is flash the Tyrannus with a uh, firmware that is that supports the multi module and you're gonna have to enable it in the software the firmware itself and then you're gonna have to program a model as well as uh, bind it to the uh, aircraft itself so I'll show you how to do do all those things in this video and hopefully I'll help you out so to update your firmware what you need to this is how I do it I basically take the micro SD card that's in here and I stick it in my computer and then I, I install the firmware, download the latest copy of the firmware and I stick it back in here and then I'm going to show you how to update it. To flash the firmware on the Tyrannus what you need to do is push these two trims, trim buttons in and then turn it on and then it will say um, Right firmware and what you want to do is select that and enter so right here and then hit enter hold enter to start writing and we're going to do that this is writing complete after flashing the firmware, one of the first things you're going to need to do is to set the default channel order to AETR, which stands for Aileron, Elevator, Throttle, and Rudder. 
Most of the aircraft that I've run into are mapped to AETR, which is channel one, two, three, and four respectively. I'll put a link in the description for the protocols and their channel mapping so that you can properly map the channels to your Tyrannus. Now I'm gonna show you how to create a new model for your Tyrannus using the multi-module. So find an empty slot and select create model. Give it a name. If you want, you can assign an image to it so this way it shows up on your main screen. Next, scroll all the way down till you get to the internal RF module. Turn that off because you're not gonna be using that. We're gonna be using the, uh, the new installed multi-module. And so we're gonna enable that by selecting Malt. If you don't see this option, then you probably don't have the multi-module firmware installed. So this is how you can tell if you do or not. If you don't, this option won't be available at all. Now select the protocol that is compatible with your aircraft. I also enable auto bind so that it automatically tries to connect with an aircraft when I have it on that model. The default input should work for most four channel aircraft, but if you need to configure more channels, this is where you do it. Again, you don't really need to touch the mixer if it's for most common four channel aircraft quads and helicopters. If your controls are reversed or going in the opposite direction, the outputs are where you can change that. All you have to do is go to the uh, little arrow and then flip it either right or left to reverse the direction. So oftentimes when you do set up a new model, uh, you know, the elevator might be reversed or the ailerons reversed or rudder and that's where you change it. I don't usually touch the curves or the global variables or logical switches, but special functions is where you can assign uh, functions to switches like you can have a throttle hold. And that's it for a simple four channel model setup. If you don't want to create your own models, you can also download them. Models are kept in your models folder on the micro SD card. After you download them, copy them to your micro SD card in the models folder and they should be available for the Tyrannus to import. To import a model, find a free slot on your Tyrannus and then hold down the enter button and the option to restore model should pop up. This is where you can select the uh, model that you copied to your SD card. And there it is. If however, you want to share or back up your model, you can do the reverse, which is to back up the model. What this does is it exports a copy of the model from the memory slot into your models folder. You should now see it in the models folder of the micro SD card with a date as well. You can also delete backups of your models here by holding down the enter key and then hitting delete. When you delete the models here, you're actually not deleting them from the memory slot. You're just deleting it from the micro SD card itself. So there's nothing really to worry about. Uh, it's just a backup copy. To bind your model to your Tyrannus, just go to the model setup page and then scroll down to bind. Activate the bind and the Tyrannus should start beeping. This is where you can then plug your uh, model up to the battery and your model should be blinking really fast and after a second or two, it should go solid. And once the light is solid, you know that it's paired and you can exit the bind mode and then you can test it out by moving the throttle. The Tyrannus is a very good radio already. So having the ability to uh, add more protocols to it so it can talk with uh, a whole bunch of other different types of aircraft like quadcopters or helicopters or planes makes it even better and for the $50 that you pay for the module it's a definite um, must have for anybody who has a Tyrannus. Anyways I hope this video helped you out. If you like what you see comment like or subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.